Is it possible for a situationship to go to full commitment after two and a half years? You bet it is. And on this episode with Emery, I explained to her the deeper whys, because until she understands why it is that she is compelled to be with Aaron in the way that she is, how she's been doing it, and what she can do to change this dynamic for herself and for him, she will not get there. I know that she can. It's what I do with women in my Lure Him Back program. And when I explain it to her and she gets it, it's a beautiful thing. Here is this episode with Emery on her long-term situationship that can be changed to a full lifelong relationship of love that she desires and deserves. Listen closely and let's get right to it. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love and given me some great guidance and direction. And now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. My guest today is 32-year-old Emery, who has been in a casual sexual relationship with 34-year-old Aaron for about two and a half years. Those in the 8020 Wonder Club will recognize Emery from a recent episode that, due to sound quality issues, we couldn't air publicly. On that episode, Emery outlined that she and Aaron were neighbors in the same apartment building. They never really dated, but started hooking up after drinking one night. Although Emery made it known to Aaron that she wanted commitment in a full relationship, he kept things going as they were. But one night, when Emery was on her way home, she texted Aaron, who abruptly replied with a text of, Don't ever contact me again. I have a girlfriend. Emery was devastated and finally moved out to protect herself from seeing the two of them and has attempted to move on. When Aaron's relationship broke up, Emery accepted him back without any more of a commitment because she hoped at that point that it would be different. About a month ago, seeing that nothing had really changed, Emery broke it off. It was then that she and I talked for the first time. Since Emery has been listening to the podcast, she understood that she shouldn't just accept him back. So when he first texted, she didn't respond, and Aaron responded as we would expect by leveling up his texts and attempting to get her response. Emery and I discussed where Emery would go with everything and how vital guiding Aaron to a real relationship would be, that it was truly a make-or-break moment in her situationship. We ended the podcast with Emery having a plan that I outlined in my Lure Him Back approach with the understanding that she would need to work on her self-concept, her subconscious programming, and manifesting a new committed relationship with Aaron. I invited Emery back on today to update us, and she let us know that a few days after our recording, Emery replied to Aaron and the two met up. A lot has happened in these past few weeks, and it's such a good example of what can go awry Therefore, I am so happy to have her back on today to help her navigate things from here, as I know it will help every woman to understand more about what to do and not to do if in a situationship wanting more. Welcome back, Emery. Thank you, Paula. I'm so happy that you decided to come back on today and we could do this. So tell me where things are right now and what happened right after we got off, I know that I gave you a script to use with him, a texting kind of template, if you will, to guide him to getting together with you, etc. Did you use that? No, I definitely, I think I made a mistake by not using it. Um, I basically just said, okay, we can meet up. And he came over and we, we hooked up and then we did have a talk, and that's when I told him, 
you know, like this is not going to work for me to continue things as they are. But that, but uh, in that conversation, he also said, I'm not ready to have an, a relationship right now because his last relationship was very traumatic or I don't know. He didn't use that word, but sort of implied it. Um, and so, so we talked and I said, well, I can't continue things as they are. Um, and he, and you know, that I feel it's difficult for me to um, be intimate with someone and not really even know them outside of that context. And he said, oh, well, we don't have to be so distant. Like we can talk more, we can go out. And then he suggested a artist that was in town that I like and he said, let's go to a concert together. Um, and then we did go out last night on a date, but it didn't go It didn't go as well as I thought it was going to. I guess I was kind of, I was excited um, that he asked me to go out, but the planning was kind of poor, like, and he only spent an hour and a half with me. Uh, I thought we were going to go to the show at 7, and he texted kind of last minute saying, oh, well, actually, she doesn't go on until 9.30, so I'll pick you up at 9 if that's okay. And then right after the concert, he was like, I have to go home. And then the conversation during our date was, like, not light. And, I like, I wanted to be more of an enjoyable experience, but somehow, like, his ex got brought up, and so we were talking about that. Yeah, so it so – I think I made the mistake by not using your texting script, and then there was also a lot of other mistakes that I've made since then. And I guess I'm trying, I'm kind of wondering what to do now. Okay, I'm glad then that you were able to come back on. So let's go over it a little bit, because you're saying you have a recognition that maybe it was a misstep not to use the script we talked about. Tell me more about that and what you mean. Because if you understand it and you know it, and you can tell me, that's much better than me telling you. I think at the time I thought it would be better to talk to him in person, but I feel like it was not enough time for him to get deeper into his feelings, like you had said. And that he basically was able to kind of convince me that, oh, we can just see each other, but it's not exactly what I want. It's not a committed relationship. Okay. So you did recognize a couple of things that are very important for anyone having had things break off and then him texting you, wanting to see you. How long did you wait from his first text? Because I have a recollection, and correct me if I'm wrong, that he had already texted you when we got on our first episode together and you hadn't texted him back. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, He texted me four times and on uh, over the span of, it was 16 days that I waited, I counted. (laughs) Yeah, so a little over two weeks. But his last text was a question, which was, do you really not want to see me again? Whereas before they were like saying, I miss you, and uh, I can't go without seeing you, but never a question, and I felt like more obligated to reply, which is stupid, but... So your words, which is stupid, it's not stupid. What happened was he knows you, and he knows what to say to get you to respond, but likely you knew there wasn't any real change. Yeah, it, it felt like it had shifted in terms of he definitely... Felt like there was a slight shift. I think he was scared to completely lose me, but I don't think I don't think it was enough. I guess I totally agree. So yes, you're right. It was too easy for him, and he realized that he could still make this little bit of effort, and you would cave, and you did. Okay, but I want everyone to know it's not the caving in the way that you said, okay, we can meet. That's not where you went wrong in the big scheme of things. Here's where you did. You went that night. He came over to your apartment? Yeah. Was it set up that the two of you were going to talk? Um, no, not I mean, we did talk, but yeah, we also uh, had sex that day, so. Okay, so when you answered him, when he asked, does this mean we are never going to see each other again? What did you answer? I said, 
I miss you too. Do you want to come over later? Uh huh. What do you think of that now? Um. <laughs> yeah, I think that it was not a good move. What was the texting script that I gave you? Do you remember? It was thank you for the gestures, but I can't move forward with things the way that they are. I want a relationship along those lines. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, if you had texted that, what do you think would have happened? I think that he probably would have said he does not want a relationship. I guess I don't really know how he would have responded. True. But let's go with the fact that he would maybe be honest and say, I don't want one. Given what you know of my work, having listened to the podcast, talking to me, what do you think I would suggest that you do with that answer, if that's what it was? I think you would suggest to just reply, okay, I understand, and leave it at that. Yes, it would be either that or not answering at all. Additionally, it would be, please respect that I do and do not contact me. Okay. What do you think was going on for you, because this is the salient point, that you didn't do that or a version of that? Um, I think that I just, like, missed him and wanted to see him, and I gave in to that. I think it's more. And when I say I think it's more... What do you think I mean by that? I think that you mean uh, working on my like, self-concept and knowing that I deserve better than what I'm getting. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's also your programming. And what I mean by that is the subconscious programming of you needing to do what your love interest wants you to do. People please, I believe you used that phrase in our first conversation so that you would not be abandoned. Yeah, that's right. I've been, I have been listening to sleep affirmations and I do feel, I feel like it's helping a little bit. I feel like I'm a little bit more ready to let this situation go now, especially after our date yesterday, which, you know, I just, uh, it was very short and all, and it didn't feel didn't feel like there was as much of a connection as I think I have built it up to be. Okay, that's good that you consciously feel that way. Now you're going to have to deal with the subconscious stuff because he's not just going to let this go. Yeah, would you recommend doing like, I mean, now I think I have to wait right until he reaches back out, but would you just repeat the same step? I want you to first understand one thing, and I want every listener to understand something major here in this scenario. It wasn't the meeting with him that derailed this. It was the energy with which you texted back. Think about it. Your text was pretty much a confirmation and come over. Because if you understand this, it really will up-level everything going on from here. If you had the go-ahead to meet with him, which in this scenario I'm giving you, what would have been better to have done? Because if you get this, you really start to get it. I guess it would have probably been better to meet just to talk and not sort of let him back in in that way. Right. It would have been, I'll give you a meeting to say what you have to say. I'll meet you at X public place, mostly a restaurant, something like that. If you had said that, what do you think he would have done? I mean, I think he would have came and talked to me. Mm -hmm. And then what would you have said? Um, I would have said, like your script. And I, I mean, I did try saying that, but I know where that goes wrong is since men communicate through action and I, I may have said that I want a relationship, but then I jumped back in to sleep with him right away so that my actions were not lining up with what I was saying. And see, that's your programming. Because having him there was like getting your hit of heroin again. You have sex with him, and then you do the talking. That's back ass word. <laughs> and of course, after he gets the sex, he's going to say exactly what he said because you didn't put him through the paces for him to have the opportunity to change. 
through his feelings. Mm -hmm. Because your self-concept is such that, well, he doesn't really want me. I'm not worth anything if he doesn't get the sex. That may sound harsh, and it's not what's in your conscious mind. It's in your subconscious programming, which drives our behavior no matter what our conscious self knows. Right. So then he deigns to do this concert date, and here's where you had a chance again. He makes this concert thing. You think you're going to have a real date, several hours, although he's already told you, I don't want a relationship. You accept, then in there, instead of saying, okay, well, I guess that was our last time together. Be well. Please respect my wish. I don't want any contact. You see how you can always immediately rectify? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But instead, you say yes to the concert. And then when the singer you're going to see is going to come on at 9.30, he's going to pick you up at 9? Is that right? Yeah, and he didn't tell me that until 7 p.m. So at 7 p.m., you say, thanks, but no thanks. Could you see yourself doing that? I thought about doing that, and I, I think that I was curious to see if like going on a date would change the dynamic but it didn't really your consciousness is justifying what your subconscious programming is saying i have to do this any crumb he's willing to throw out i will accept that's what's happening so you see it all starts with the work on ourselves i always say focus on you and he will too, or focus on you, and he will do right by you. When he says he doesn't want a relationship, you know he had one, even though all along the way he was telling you he didn't want one, correct? Yeah, that's right. What he was basically doing was saying, I don't want one with you. Yeah. And you, as the wonderful woman you are, in all that you've given him, have to do the action of... I am worthy, valued, and you don't want me? I don't want you. But you're doing exactly the opposite. And it's why you are getting the results you're getting. Because I have no doubt that he actually likes you a lot. But every man, no matter what he's doing in life, love, career, hobby, whatever it is, a man views himself most typically as he is tantamount to being in his game of basketball, LeBron James. He wants everything in his life to be up to that standard, and it is why he can fancy himself being in a relationship with a worthy opponent, equivalent of Steph Curry. And you are showing him, I'm just a player in the B leagues. You see? Yeah. You can have this if you show through time and action that you are Steph Curry. You can, but it takes work, intention, mindfulness, and practice. It's why I have a program to do it, because it takes work under those three pillars of self-concept, subconscious programming, and working with the mechanics of men, and then, of course, the manifesting. Self-concept and subconscious programming are one and the same. That's why I say it's three pillars. Mindset, Mechanics of men and manifesting. Under that mindset is subconscious programming, self-concept. I would imagine you see that now. Yeah, definitely. So what did you most want to know from me today? Um, I guess I wanted to know um, like what, like if I, like if I now send a text saying what I want or if I just kind of like leave it as is and then, and then like do the same thing if I block him like what what the best what the best thing to do is the best thing to do is to get to work on it each and every week because on our last episode I gave you what to do that proved too difficult because you didn't have the support you couldn't just hold back and have someone to go to to say okay what do I do with this instead it was a sure come over in other words, I don't want you to impugn yourself or flagellate yourself for having made a mistake. I want you to see how far afield you are because then you can actually set out and change it. Yeah, I definitely, I see that. Mm -hmm. Because I can give it to you again, 
But depending on what he does, you will be right back because he's not going to just walk away easily from this at all. He gets something very profound from this. It's not simply the sex. Do you know what that is? Um, is it like validation? Mm-hmm, that's part of it. In other words, the adulation, the unconditional love in a sense, the sex, of course, the validation, the affirmation of he's all that and a bag of chips, the control. There's so many things he gets from this because he has programming that while opposite of yours in terms of the people pleasing, a little bit of low self-concept, etc., it's equal to, opposite, but equal to. It's why you have found yourself in this situationship with him for as long as you have. Wow, thank you. That, <laughs> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But foundationally, there's connection here. In one way, shape, or form, there is. You owe it to yourself because you love him and would like to have this fully to go through the steps of finding out when you level up and become Steph Curry because he feels himself to be LeBron James in this life version of basketball, you owe it to yourself to see if he will then want to commit to playing only with you. He's never going to commit to playing his life with a B-League player. That wouldn't float his boat. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's not only doing it for you, which first and foremost, that's what the work is about. Because whether it's him or somebody else that you fall for, you need to have all of this foundationally. But through the woman is how the man becomes the best he can possibly be. He has programming to overcome too. It's why this eligible guy has not had a successful relationship. The only way that's ever going to happen is for him to have a female worthy opponent who gets it and through her actions related to high self-worth, self-concept, living in the knowing, doing what works with men, she knows she's all that and can have it. That starts to work on him because he may be a very worthy guy, but most worthy men without finding a worthy opponent will flounder around. And when they flounder around, they run amok on women and sometimes on society. Mm -hmm. So it's worthwhile on so many levels. It's you putting in the time for yourself and the investment to work on what's needed here that will make you feel amazing and to know that you can have everything you desire and deserve. Even if you think, well, after last night, I'm so confused now, I don't even know if I want him anymore. Is that where you're at now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just feel like I got, I got really upset after that. I... I am. I do feel like I'm going on dates with other people who are planning dates and treating me well. And but I'm still. I still, you know, want this relationship. But I think I should probably let it go. And yeah, last night made me feel like I don't. Maybe I've put this on a pedestal. Put him on a pedestal, and it wouldn't be that great to be with him. Well, it certainly wouldn't be with this dynamic. But it's a combination of having the history with him, being bonded through time and sex. And the ones who are treating you well are not playing into your subconscious programming of what love is. So it doesn't feel like it feels with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because as you laid out before, you're programmed as what we say in the vernacular, a people pleaser. Well, what that means is that from zero to seven, there is some programming there that you had to be something that you felt your primary love interests, your mother, most definitely, and father, or their surrogates, your caregivers. You had to be that in order to be loved. And what love is to a zero to seven year old in theta brainwave state is attention and survival. It's why it's so profound when we're older, because the chance of that abandonment from the love interest actually 
feels in our subconscious programming, like being without them, is that we're going to die. We can't imagine going on without them. That's how profound it is and why studies have shown that people in heartbreak to have their love interest back is like a hit of heroin in the brain. It's that profound. So yeah, I have no doubt that the other men you're meeting, it's paling in comparison. Yeah, that's right. I feel like I want to be excited about them, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. Because you haven't worked through this to the degree that it needs to be worked through so that you either get it or you no longer feel it or really want it. You need to commit to it, to the work of it. It's been nearly three years, and I believe you said you want to be married and have a family. Yeah, I do. Well, you're 32 now, Emery, still? Mm -hmm. I'm turning 33 next month. Okay, 33. Is it worth your while to attempt to make this change in a 12-month period? Yeah, definitely. That would, if it's possible. <laughs> so that's your real hurdle to jump, is that underneath, because of your programming and all that you've sustained with him, it's like you're giving up ship. You don't even believe that it's possible. Yeah. I have to tell you that that makes me sad because it is possible. My clients do it. I've done it. It is possible. But first, you must believe, and then you act from what will give you the best probability of it. In other words, we go with, has anyone ever in human history done it? And I could rattle off cases where it's been done, including myself. That means it's possible, but it doesn't mean it's probable unless you start to believe and you do what we know works with men to allow them to go through what they need to go through in order to see you as tantamount to being Steph Curry in this metaphorical basketball arena. Yeah. So your question was, what do I do next, right? That depends on what he does. I'm going to generally answer that for you this way. Wondering what I'm going to tell Emery she needs to do with Aaron for this situationship to have any possibility of getting Emery the commitment and family she desires and deserves? In the rest of this episode, I tell Emery what she needs to do and stop doing so that she has the best chance of Aaron feeling what he needs to feel in order to pursue a real relationship with her. And because I want you to get the results you desire with your current or future Mr. Right, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, an exclusive membership-only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you'll get nearly 200 ad-free episodes categorized by age and relationship status. And because I want you to get the results you desire with your current or future Mr. Right and hear the rest of this episode with Emery, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, an exclusive membership-only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you'll get nearly 200 ad-free episodes categorized by age and relationship status, plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired unfiltered coaching conversations like this one with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your romantic life. There is much more. The 8020 Wonder Club includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace each and every week. It alone is valued at over $500 and is all yours as a member. Join monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a six or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months, and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve in your love life. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club and join us, as that is the only way you'll be able to hear what I tell Emery she must do to get right with herself that will have the best chance of having Aaron fly right. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way, 
to have the divine right results you desire in your romantic life. Go now to the8020wonder.club. That's T H E 8020 W O N D E R dot C L U B. You and your love will be glad you did. <laughs>